Hello there. Thanks for watching or listening to VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell podcast. We're on about episode 140 something now. You're either watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify or iTunes on your way to work or on the treadmill or on your run or whatever. Anyway, you know me, Steve Lillis. You know my co-host, John Evans. Tonight's guest, a boxer who uh, we could say he's got a license to thrill. Very rare and never in a dull fight. And he's in an absolute... Brilliant clash coming up on March the 2nd in Bolton. It's Jack Flatley. Jack, thanks for coming on tonight. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, yeah first, first time being on. So yeah, first looking half. Forward to... thought, thought better get you on because you've got this fight coming up. Yourself and Ryan Amos, it's, it's a fight that can't disappoint, can it? Commonwealth, Super World, away, Eliminator. The winner could get a crack at Sam Gilly because Sam might fancy the winner of that sort of eliminator. Or the winner almost certainly get a decent TV fight, I should think. How do you see the fight? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's um but I mean, yeah, that's the main reason I wanna I won the fight because uh I want, yeah, a crack at a, another major title, um, which is a Commonwealth title. So yeah, and, and obviously, you know, uh, Amos is um He's a tough, durable fighter. Um, he's and he's only he's only lost one fight to um, Janae Boston and Janae Boston. I mean, he he went. He look at him. He's a good fighter, and um, he's probably going to go on to be, you know, pro- probably that world level. So um, I mean, that's no no shame in in losing to someone like that. Other than that, he's not he's not lost. So it's going to be yeah, it's going to be a good. A good fight, a good test, um, and it's in my own town as well. So yeah, I'm buzzing for that. Jack, do you think you when you when you look now this this scene's all changed at the minute? When you think back about your fights with Heaney now, do you think they've aged well, and that's actually done you a bit of a service? Because you, <clears> you thought well, didn't you? I think no one might have, everyone might have underestimated Nathan. Everyone saw how Nathan dealt with Dentley. Uh, Bentley, sorry. Do you think that might have, like, in a way, sort of boosted your reputation a little bit as well? Uh, yeah, that's like I, th- I think like a lot of people underestimated him before I fought him, and then even after I fought him, I think they underestimated him a bit as well, thinking or oh, flatly give him, you know, because they, they were they were close fights, and and yeah. um, people were like oh, flatly give him a close fight. Um, so it's an easy night for for Bentley. But so I think they were probably underestimating underestimating me a little bit by saying that. Um, but obviously he's gone on for win British title and he he performed brilliant in that fight. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's probably better for me if anything. I mean, it, it, I've done blemishes on my record now against British um, British champion or above. So I mean, it it could be worse, I suppose. Did you think, Jack, just stand on Nathan a bit? I mean, I know in the first fight at the Manchester Arena, you were absolutely you could see your reaction in the ring to the stoppage because you obviously felt you, you know, what you said after was that you were going to go on and win that night. You felt you could, you know, you, your frustration was obvious for the 20,000 crowd to see. But after the second fight, did you think fair play? He's better than I thought he was. Uh, yeah, I think I think what happened was I think he, you know, I think he raised his game a little bit because, if I'm honest, I think after from the first fight he might have underestimated me a little bit, and then, and then he, you know, he, yeah, he stepped up in the second fight, and um, in the first round in the in the second fight he, he threw the kitchen sink at me and um, tried his best, I think, for for get me out in the first round, um, which. You know, I weathered through. Like, I've been, I've been, I've been in that kind of situation before, anyway. So, but yeah, the, the uh, he were better in the second fight. Um, just different things they did, and he probably did. He did them in the Bentley fight as well. Like, I, I probably think that my fight with him was good preparation for the way that he boxed Bentley. Yeah. Hey, just before we get on to the actual. Meat and potatoes of this podcast, Jack. You got the Flatley Brothers T-shirt on there, aren't you? You've got the yeah, course, you and yeah. Kieran yeah. are opening that gym, aren't they? Tell tell the people about that. Yeah, yeah. So me and my, I've just finished there now. I've just been coaching at the gym. Um, me and my brother have 
um, open the gym up in. Uh, it's in a bit of a weird loca uh, location. To be fair, it's like in between. It's technically Bolton, but it's in between Bolton and uh, and Darwin in Blackburn. Um, yeah, we've opened the gym up together. We're just setting up. Um, yeah, and everything's everything's going well. We're getting our boxing ring arrives on Friday, so we're um, we're all um, we're all good to roll. Yeah. I presume you're going to be a trainer when you when you decide enough's enough for this game. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. I, I mean, I've I, I've always been in. I've been in coaching now for like seven, eight years. Anyway, um, I used to coach for Alex Alex Marvienko when I was at Elite Gym. I used to do a bit of coaching now as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, all I do is boxing. It's you know, I train, I train, and then and then I coach people. Um, so I don't really switch off from it to be fair. <laughs> well, I say we'll we'll kick on with what John describes as the meat and potatoes. John, have you got your clock and your belt to stop us after three minutes? Already, yeah. We'll, you we'll get a bit serious here if we keep chatting on Jack. So, you know, it'd be like <laughs> fighting Ryan Amos with Johnny at the night with his <laughs> bell and his clock. Anyway, I tell you what, John's going to kick us off at um with the Jonas versus Mayer fight at the weekend, John. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, firstly, what a brilliant fight that was. Jonas and Mayer. I think we see a lot of these for, for women's fights and it's hell for leather, isn't it? A million punches. But you know none of them are going to hurt each other and it just depend, It descends into who can throw the most. But I thought that was a real high-quality fight. They were both picking hard shots. I think they were both buzzed a couple of times. Um, great fight. I personally, I thought Mayer just about won. I thought it was like 6-4, something like that. Yeah, so I had it, yeah. But I was looking at the... Re the reaction afterwards, and you'd have thought it was the worst robbery in history. And I, I just can't get my head around people taking such strong opinions on fights like that. You know, that was a, a hell of a fight. Most people think Maya shaded it. I certainly don't think it was an out-and-out -out robbery, like people say. We might get a rematch down the line. I think it's a fight that's worthy of a rematch rather than just one that's written into a contract somewhere. I think it's just a bit extreme, the reaction, really. To be honest, but a, a tremendous fight. I, I watched the fight and I was um was like one of them where I was watching it and I weren't really scoring it but yeah from from you know when the decision were announced I, I couldn't really see what the yeah like like you say I couldn't really see what the fuss were about it and um yeah it were it were, it, it were an insane fight I seen both of them get um like you say you don't really see a lot in women's boxing where they're getting stunned and buzzed and. I think both of them got caught, um, especially later on in the fight. Yeah, I, w I watched it delayed. Um, I knew the result when I saw it. I was coming back from somewhere when the fight was on. Um, uh, I, I agree with you. I had it 6-4, John, and I was thinking today and saying to Buncey on the phone today about every time there's a close fight, people who don't like it just scream, you know, boxing's crooked, it's like Germany. It's just it's just nonsense. It's bollocks. Um you know what the great thing is? We, we, we used to speak about this on the pod a lot. As women's boxing is evolving, we're now getting these great rivalries. Um, in four years' time, imagine what it's going to be like then. I think we are, we are now seeing these these great rivalries. But what the other night showed was, have a look at the... I haven't looked. Have a look at these girls' records. I wonder how many combined 10-rounders they'd had between them. And that, that shows for the quality we showed the other night. We're seeing... Too many of these female fighters fighting for world titles over after five, six fights. And you can see it's not world-class boxing. We've got girls fighting for Commonwealth titles so early. Um, that, you know, that was years of what they put in the other night, showing how good women's boxing can be. I thought it was a fantastic fight. So even though I know the result, and like you, I had it 6-4. I spoke to someone today. They had it four rounds to Maya, but they had five rounds so close they could see why it went that way. So there's no way it was a robbery. No, nope. bang on. Um, round two, you're going to start us off, Jack, and uh, one of the big topics of the last week: Eddie Hearn versus Frank Warren. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think they've they've not announced it yet, um, but that's what they, you know, that's what seems to be in talks. Um, I think they've they've got a lot of the the money thrown at them from the Saudi sort of stuff, aren't they? And, I think that's that's kind of pushing them 
that way you know, to um, I mean Frank Warren earlier and never never you would have never expected them to work together but obviously when you're getting that kind of money for on it I think I think it just makes sense from both so um, yeah yeah it's pure business boxing is a business it's money driven um they 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 suddenly I'm not going to call it friendship working relationship is uh look it's great with boxing and you look at the fights they could make obviously the obvious ones AJ and Fury but it's too big to go on a 5 by 5 bill but you never know with the Saudis two fights that stand out for me that I would love to see Callum Smith and Anthony Yard I mean that would be yeah, absolutely brilliant and you know what what about Liam Davis and Shabazz Massoud they're two yeah, fights yeah. I'd love to see on it yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't think about that one. That's yeah. Liam would definitely be up for it, wouldn't he? Do you know? I I, I think Liam's above that though. I I, famous, I think Liam, yeah. well, Liam's British European Commonwealth champion. How about Dennis McCann against Masood? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Dennis one, has got yeah. to get up to that level, hasn't he? Yeah. But he, I I personally hope we get fights like that because for one thing, I think boxing needs at the minute is stars and event headliners and people who the public latch on to. And if we use the same old names, you know, Yard Smith's a great fight. But if we use the same old names and put them in fights, I don't think we're gaining anything. If you make, if you put people like McCann Davis in fights, it, this is going to be high profile. And if they can win a big high profile fight, suddenly we've got a new breed of headliners coming through and people who can headline yeah. shows. And I think that's what we need, really. Yeah, it's just that you know what? That, that, the more I think about Smith Yard, it isn't just in you know, all the money they'll be fighting for. And good luck to them if they're getting a million each or whatever, whatever they're going to get each if that, that fight came off. But you imagine the stakes of that. You know, it's win, winners in there, loser, it's over. That is a last chance saloon fight for the highest level. And that's what it's all about. And that's what His Excellency or Turkey, whatever you want to know him as, he's given us these fights we want to see. I mean, the heavyweights could fight. You could have Johnny Fisher and Adelaide. What a bit of fun that would be. How about that, yeah. Yeah, I think they mentioned that at home as well, mate. Maybe. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Moses at home, and Cameron yeah, Moses, yeah. Anyway. yeah. They might not make Fisher against Moses at home, might but you might yeah. get Adelaide. Well, what, what about <laughs> you, Jack? If you was in, um, what if, Jack? If you was in, um, one of them camps, which fight would you pick at eleven or one hundred and fifty-four pound? Who would you like to fight? You, you, if you were, whose side would you want to be on to get the opponent from the other side? I don't think anyone who's got any of the, you know, the domestic, like British Commonwealth title, I don't think any of them are with any of them, to be honest, at my weight. Um, but as um, in terms of like the promoter and stuff like that, I'd probably, I just think Hearn puts on the better shows. Um, and yeah, I don't, I, I, he's, he, I think he's, Putting his name about worldwide now, isn't he? And, um, yeah. So I'd probably probably go to 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 her now. Yeah. And it, and if Turkey's excellency wants an exciting eleven stone boxer, he knows where to find you, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Want you yeah. in Saudi Arabia. If he if he wants to throw that kind of money about, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be there yeah, tomorrow. That's... Sorry, Ryan Amos, I've got to yeah. go to Saudi yeah. Arabia. Yeah, yeah. Um, round three. Um. Yeah, AJ is it, obviously stand with Ben Davison for his fight against um Ungano. Um, some people think that's a good decision. Others are giving it stick. You know, everyone. You know, like you say, it's like with Jonas Mayer. Everything seems extreme now. You know, there's no let's see how it goes. It's either a terrible decision in people's eyes or a great. You know what? I think at this stage of his career, he needs to be comfortable, and. For the first time in a while, it'll be back. You know, he's been in America for camps. It'll be, you know, it'll be back at home near his home in London. And you know, he's he's all boxers at any level. That you know, their, their careers hinge on training, changing trainers. You've made a big decision recently, Jack, and I, I think he's got it right. So he'll be at home, and he's not going to be out of his comfort zone going forward as well. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a big thing. I mean, because he's got a lot of, um, he has a lot of media commitments and stuff like that anyway, doesn't he? So, I mean, the last thing you want is being back and forward from America and 
as well as having a whole lot on your plate and then you've got a fight on top of that. Um, but yeah, it, it's obviously because um, Davidson's been with you before, it's more of a question yeah. of, to me, it's more of a question of like, is, is Davidson right, right to do that, I suppose? Yeah, loyal. Yeah, loyalty. But yeah, like Steve yeah. said in the one before, it's a business, isn't it? Money talks yeah, these days. Well, yeah, yeah. And you can you can imagine that the the you know Tyson Fury if he goes up against um oh. against AJ with, with with Ben Davis in the corner, given what their relationship was, it's. Uh... Imagine John Fury. <laughs> John, <laughs> I don't think John. Oh. Anyway, I don't think John was over keen on, on, on Ben anyway. So you can imagine the build up to that. You almost really want that fight to happen for the build up for the press conference. Um Ben Davis in AJ's corner and John Fury and Tyson Fury in the other corner. We yeah. talk about loyalty then and knowing where your bread's buttered. I, I I when he went to Davis and I was a bit worried for Joshua because Ben he's very detailed, isn't he? And we break everything down in that gym, watching video yeah. and making tiny things. But from listening to what he said, they've done the total opposite of that, haven't they? They've just reminded him what he's good at. Don't think about it too much. Just go and do yeah. it. And I thought he looked better than ever. And you know what it's like with football. When footballs are at the top, if you don't if you don't need managers and tacticians, you need a motivator, don't you? You need someone who you're willing to play for. And if he's interested in Davis and he likes him, I think that's probably the best thing, the best thing you can hope for at this stage of his career. John, over to you for round four. Um, your favourite punch? Yeah, what shot do you like? When you watch boxing and you see someone get knocked out, what's your favourite shot? What's your favourite punch? And Jack, what's your favourite to land, I suppose? And mine, I, I, I've always gone through spells. I used to like a, a shot to the body. I always used to like watching a left up to the body. And then I liked an, an uppercut. I used to think an uppercut looked great. But these days, it's just a left up. And I like I always think back to Arturo Gatti knocking out Ruey last with a left hook, one of the first That's fights ever took proper notice of. But the one that sticks in my mind is Big Enzo Macaronelli knocking out Bruce Scott with the most perfect left hook you've ever seen in your entire life. It when he when it hits his chin, it doesn't even deviate, it just goes straight through Scott's chin. It's the most perfect punch I've ever seen. And yeah, so I would say a, a proper left hook is my, my favourite. My favourite to see. Yeah, at the minute, I, at the minute, I've um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking body shots. Um, and I think, and for my last fight, I was trying to work on body shots. That that was the first time I'd ever even put anyone down with a body shot in a fight. So I've been, you know, been working on that a bit. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm saying a body shot at the minute. Yeah, yeah your, your last fight was ex. He was an angry man, that fella, as well, weren't he? He wasn't very happy <laughs> when he got stopped yeah. raging from the ring. It was, um, you know what? Left hook's my my um favorite punch. I mean, uh, domestic level, we did it a bit above the Ensley Bingham used to throw the perfect left hooks, it got him out of trouble. You know, it really, you know, it's, it's a cliche, but it was an equalizer. But I, I'm thinking of um, the first shot that put um, when Donald Curry did McCrory, yeah. Yeah. Left hook. I think he got up and did him with a right hand after that. But it was the left hook that set it all up. And I just think you may maybe it's when you it seems the left hook where you see such devastating knockouts as well. Yeah. Well you also get the time when both fighters miss with the right hand, they both cock over and they both load the left hip up and they both come back yeah. with a left hook at the same time. And when one that person like, beats them by a fraction like of a second. The Cullen Cullen stoppage, I think, was the the Heffron fight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Left up, yeah. The ball flight missed it. Well, Cullen landed that one, obviously. Yeah, who was it as well? Um, Wayne Alexander tackle. Who was that? A big oh, left great! Up? What a shot that was, Wayne Alexander. You know, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne we're, going, we're going off topic there. When Wayne turned professional, I was convinced because he was leaving a trail of devastation in the amateurs at yeah. domestic league, and I really, I, I thought when he turned professional. Our um, we we had a you know the Mark II of Nigel Ben was coming along. He 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 was that much of a concussive punch. Even in the amateurs, he was leaving them starched out. Do you ever did you watch Wayne Alexander Jack? Your weight there. I don't. I've not seen much of him, to be honest. Oh. No. <laughs> Phenomenal fight. 
Load up his highlight reel, Jack. Yeah. The Takaloo right. fight. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the Takaloo <laughs> fight? Have you seen the Takaloo fight, Jack? I've not, no. That, I'm going to send you the video be, yeah. of it later on. I'm going to find I'll it for on, you in a minute. Yeah, I'll be on, I'll be on that. I'll be I'll, on I'm going to find it you in a bit. I'll send it to you on WhatsApp. Jack, over to your final topic, um, training <laughs> schedules. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, to be fair, it's just like something I've, I've been always interested in and I always try and like prize it out of anyone who I get for the speed to be for a good level. Um and or any coaches I would try and get out of them what they think the like the the perfect training schedule is really um because I'm just I don't, I don't know I, I like doing everything um I'm like meticulous with what I want to do I, I like I want to make sure I've got the work in for a fight I want to make sure I've um ticked every box so speaking um I'd yeah so I, I, I'm just yeah, curious of what people think that the the best, what how many you know how many runs you should be doing a week, how many boxing sessions, how many strength and conditioning. Um, yeah, yeah. I just want. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a trainer. I mean, you know, John Arvid, he's said it. But how important do you think rest is? I used to, you know, I run quite a lot, but I used to like train for marathons and stuff, and only at like you know a daft level for four hour, you know, whatever my time was. I always found the rest was as important as the recovery was as important as the training. Are you, are you one of yeah. those fighters, Jack, who, if you've got to have a couple of days rest, thinks I've got to do something, or Yeah, I, to be fair, I, I hate resting, but I mean, really? I, I definitely, I understand it a lot more now. Um, like when I was with, when I was training with Alex, Alex used to have to literally kick me out of the gym for stop my training and stuff like that, but I don't, like, yeah, I don't like resting because I feel like I'm, you know, I could be doing something in that time. Maybe, you say you've got an eight week, you've got eight week training. Um, every day is like precious in it to, to getting the best out of yourself for, for that fight. Um, but yeah, I think you know you, you do need the rest is important because you recharge for <clears throat> go again next week or the next day or the next bar. Something I've wondered, Jack, is if you work with strength and conditioning coaches, do they speak to your boxing coach? Because you, you might have like a, um, a sparring session coming up on a Wednesday morning, but your strength and conditioning guy's got you doing heavy plyometrics on a Tuesday afternoon. And when you wake up Wednesday yeah. morning, your legs are done. So is there any talk between your strength coach and your boxing coach about what your boxing coach wants you to actually be doing? Yeah, I think they definitely should be. Um... Like every strength coach I've ever had, I've always told them, um, yeah, I'm sparring tomorrow or because the sparring is the most important thing. Like, I mean, that's the, the secondary thing to um, to the boxing. Um, obviously, you've got to get strong, but I mean, if you've got, if you've got a strength session, I know my, my strength session on a Tuesday, but then I'll spar on the Wednesday. So I'll tell my strength coach that I can't be too heavy today I've got to do something that works on my speed rather than lifting heavy week, uh, heavy weights or so I'm fresh for the spa tomorrow yeah. you said the penny just before we move on to the final round, you said the penny sort of dropped about rest what is it that Martin or someone has said to you and you thought they're right about having the rest days um, I, I mean I, I, I suppose I started doing it when I was with uh, with Alex and then you know, um, Martin's big on it as well. Is just, just you need the, the rest because, at the day, like I train, I I train year round. Um, I don't really do like camps. Um, I won't, I won't just, I won't be out of the gym and then in the gym. I'll, I'm in the gym all the time. So if I'm just hammering it all the time, I need to keep my body good. Um, obviously. The more you, the more wear and tear you've got, it, the the less time you have for fighting. So, I suppose I just want to, you know, keep keep fighting as long as I can, rather than being what I know by the time I'm <laughs> thirty one or something like that. <laughs> um, 
Right, final round, round six. Maybe this is a bit a high praise, baby Oscar. I want to talk about John Ryder. I mean, he hasn't won the titles that Oscar De La Hoya had. But you know what? Like, like Oscar De La Hoya, who has John Ryder ever swerved? He's got Mungia this weekend. Is he 42-0? and zero? And I did this today to do a bit of research for this. His last 13 fights, Ryder's opponents have got a 319 wins. 14 losses and four draws in his last 13 fights. I mean, that and the Steve, the CV stacked. I mean, domestically, he lost to Field, Rocky Fielding and, and Armfield when they were, you know, when they were real, when they were live wise domestically, you know. And Phil, he was crazy still, result. Jack Armfield beating Ryder yeah, sounds like a crazy result. Yeah, you know, Fielding, but you know, and then, you know, the controversy again, you know, the close fight with Callum Smith. Canelo beaten. He's beaten Zach Parker, Jacobs. Who was there? Was a decent Russian somewhere in there? Was it Sorocco or Sorocco? Sor- yeah, Sorocco. Yeah. yeah, Jamie Cox. I just think, you know, he's nine four in those thirteen fights as well. I just don't think he gets enough praise, and nobody knows him. You know, John's a very quiet guy, and I don't think he's bothered that the fame hasn't followed him. He's just happy. I think he's a bit, you know, he's just happy to be in these great fights and be earning. You know, I should think he's earned very, very good money. But I just think that's an incredible stat for his last 13 fights. You know, and even like Patrick Nielsen was about, you know, a very good European campaigner when he beat him. I think he was 29-1. and one. I think he lost the title fight. Absolutely staggering what he's done. And everything he, he's got from coming back from that Billy Joe Saunders lost it. And that was close. He, you know, he's done it all. He's done it himself, and I just don't think anyone praises John Ryder enough. I think he's been one of our finest professional boxers of the last decade. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it's all about. I think he's he's, he's taken the big fights, um, having them names on your record. It, win or lose, it still gives you some kind of um, some kind of legacy, on it? If you if you if you have them fights, you're the likes of Canelo and people like that, and you've lost, but you've still you've not just called it a day after losing to him. You've been back in with Mungir or you've been back in with whoever else after that. It's um full credit to him. I mean, after this weekend, it'll be you know he's he's going in. If you added this Saturday's fight into that, something like three hundred and sixty wins between them. The last fourteen. Absolutely staggering. What's your say, John? Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? It's it's an example, isn't it, in plugging away. You know, he didn't throw his trainer under a bus. He didn't blame other people. He just kept going and going and going. And it's more than 10 years since he lost to Billy Joe Saunders. And don't forget, he came back about 18 months after that and we had we set him up for a British title fight against Nick Blackwell. That's Nick it. Blackwell stopped him. That's right. And then he yeah. lost to Armfield and Rocky Fielding. He's 30, he said, 35 now. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 You said then after losing to Billy Joe, Blackwell, Armfield and Fielding that he would have had this second part of his career. I don't think anyone would have believed you. Yeah. But a real good fight to watch, isn't he? Solid. He's improved throughout his career. Just stayed dedicated, got on, and he's got his rewards. And, and I, I would love to see him get a world title. Whether, whether it'll happen, I don't know. But he's definitely hurt a few quid. And I tell you what, sometimes these days, there's that many world title belts. Your reputation's worth worth more than a WBA belt, isn't it? That's right. You know, and, and Ryder's reputation, right at the top. And all, also, uh, this thing, same with yourself, Jack. The son, it's thing. Always, is, you know, there's still too much of this. A loss is the end of the world. Matter does it? You know, you go, but you know, you look at yourself, Jack. You come through this fight with Ryan Amos. You're not earning those John Ryder paydays yet, but you're right back in there for at worst another big TV fight. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. I mean. That I, I take um, inspiration from people like that, especially in being, especially in being thirty five and still having having the fights like that. Um, and he's had a few losses, you know, earlier on in his career. I mean, like I'm twenty nine now, so it, it gives me like could give me a bit of a spur on to think, you know, what I've lost a couple. But I mean, yeah, like you say, you can just turn around. Like, like, like that, really. So, um, yeah, it's good for to see. Hey, you're a baby, mate. You look, I think Ryan Amos, who you're fighting, is 33. Only lost winner. Age is just yeah. a number. 29, you're just a, you know, 
like just starting out on this this game, mate. Exactly, yeah. Still got another ten years yet. Is that what you see? You're gonna be there at forty, are you? All right, I, I, I all, to be fair, I always said um, when I first started boxing because I've been boxing since I was ten years old. I always said that I'd be that I wanted to be done when I'm thirty. But I mean, yeah, I'm thirty this year, so I don't. That's not happening. That, no, nah, I mean, I've already given myself another two years because we've had lockdown and COVID and all that stuff. So we'll see where we're at after another three. Uh, That's the type of in the away corner in Oldham Sports Centre when he's 34. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you love it too much. You love it too much, Jack. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. I can tell yeah. every time I see you love boxing too much. You were said at the so start we... of this podcast, all you do is boxing. If you're either training people or training yourself or fighting, you know. Yeah, you're... I think I'll get. Um... I'll be one of them where I'm a bit jealous. Like, I'll be training someone doing the corner and I'll be like, oh, I mean, I miss this. I need to. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I'll be. I think after the Heaney fight, people were saying, oh, has, has he jacked it in? Has he retired? And I'm just, I'm just, just laughing at it, really. It's just <laughs> a bit mad. I tell you what, it's been great having you on tonight, Jack. Um, first time you've been on, it's been a pleasure us having you. John, thanks as always for coming on. We've recorded this a bit later than usual tonight, so I'll let you get back to whatever football you're watching or motorbike you're fixing, John, or whatever you're writing for boxing scene, but thank you. And thanks everyone else um, who's watching or listening. It's been an excellent 30 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, lads. Cheers. Cheers, fellas. Nice one, lads. Cheers, Steve. Nice Cheers. one, John. See you soon. Bye. Yeah, see you soon, mate. For all boxing, info, news and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across the north, click and subscribe. VIP, boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.